Okay, continuing. Now, I'm going to show you what a real graphic designer would do if they were tasked with making a vector of this logo. They wouldn't piece it together through what the easiest shapes were first. They would start with the biggest overall shape. And the biggest overall shape is the outline, right, of this. So I'm going to start here, work away just on the outline in one pin all the way to here where it stops. And I'm going to try to go pretty fast. You kind of understand what that entails now. And I'm going to try to go to the peak of each curve. I'm going to keep all my anchor points pretty far apart. And when the curve doesn't agree with what I want, I just leave it and I will fix it later. So you see I'm not matching up exactly with the curves, but I will be able to fix them once I've closed the path. Like here, I want this to go to a straight for sure. Probably to about there. But I don't get to yet. And I'm going to go ahead and do the jaw as well. And then I'm just going to click, because I've already refined these edges, I'm just going to get back to the beginning, working inside the lines I've already made. But if I were a professional graphic designer, this would be the first step I would do. I'd do the full cutout. But I thought if I showed you that to begin with, you would all get really just frustrated trying to use the pin tool that way. But this is what's called the master shape, right? So now I need to alter that master shape because it's not right. Instead, I need to change this to be a straight on one side, right? I need to change these to be straights on one side. And this can only be done after the fact in this program. Straight on one side. Same with this one. Straight on just one side. Or actually reverse the Reverse the curve on that. Then I do want a curve on this one. But straight on this side. And then reverse the curve on this. Just slightly and probably move it down. There we go, that's looking better. And I got to reverse the curve on this, just that side. Okay, I've closed one full shape. Double click, get the points, reverse the curve here. And I do that by holding down Command if you're on a PC control. And I can just nip and tuck some of the others till I think the shape is pretty good. Just 
change that to a straight, blow out this curve. I think I can do it from the other side though. Change that to a curve, there we go. Now I have more control. Remember I can select multiple points at once and move them together. So if I hold down shift, I click there, I click here, then I can move them together. Shorten it, lengthen it. Double click to change things into straights. Double click to change them to curves, but I want this one to be straight, so I pull it back, even though it overlaps the tongue. Turn this to a straight. Oh. Adjust this one. Oh, I need to hold down Command. That's why. So I take the time to get the, the full cutout to be the shape I want. And that master shape will make it easier To place everything else. Okay, so now what do I need to do? Now I need to turn off the border, turn on a fill, right? For now I'm going to make it a middle gray, and I'm going to put it behind everything else. So how do I do that? Click on it and I can use this option to move it behind my other shapes. I don't want it behind my sketch though, so I went one too far. Move it up. There we go. Okay. So now what can I do with this shape? I can duplicate it. Make it a different color, like white. And then I can squeeze it. to make my outline something close to it, right? It's like a drop shadow almost. I'm actually gonna make it quite small. And that way it will give me all the anchor points that I need to make a master outline instead of just a master shape. So if I did like this, that's one way to go. And then I could select both of them, and then I could subtract one from the other, right? Now what does that do? Well, now I have this shape. If I change its color back to black, and I use the anchor points, oh, because of the way it does combos, it doesn't let me, oh, there, there they are. So the anchor points are there. So I need them on the side and I can move them to adjust the width of the outline, hopefully, as individual anchors. Ah. But because of the way it does compounds, it's a little problematic. So let's go back before I subtracted one from it. It's using Command Z. So I have the master shape, right? Now that's going to be helpful to me later because a basic logo, if I make it black, is a master silhouette. So I need to turn off the border. There we go. 
change the color to black. And then all I need to finish off the logo is to delete the space around where I want whites, right? I can cut away from it. So make shapes to cut away. So that's another way you can work because remember, you wanna think of this not as lines, but as full shapes. So that master shape is gonna help me a lot. I can create another master shape with the kind of puddle underneath. Line that up with the tongue. It's kind of a floating shadow shape. And I can do it like that, or turn that off for a second. I can do it with a rounded rectangle. Then with the rounded rectangle, I can double click on it and I can hold down shift make it as rounded as possible, and then add anchor points at the top and bottom. Turn them into curves. And in that way, create a shape It's a little bit more like, come on, there we go, what I sketched. And I can decide what looks better. I'm going to bring it in a little bit. You know what, I'm gonna hold down shift and get all corner points. I can just adjust them that way. Turn them all to curves instead of rounded corners. Maybe delete these. Oh, I kind of like that slight bend in the bottom. So any way you can get the control you want. All these different methods for making just cutouts of shapes, that's all we're doing, is open to you. In raster programs, we're controlling square pixels. Here we are controlling cutouts of shapes. Okay, so now working from the bottom, from this master path, I'm going to lock it just for the time being with the padlock. I can also right click and say lock object. And I can turn that off anytime in my layers. Now what I can do is use the pin tool and build the shapes I want to delete from it. So it's really like cutting out from black paper. And I can do it little by little, but I need to always contain them, right? Start where I stop. And so I'm gonna change this shape to a background fill, but I'm going to make it white. Right. I'm going to run it behind other layers, but on top of my master path, and then I can adjust it double click on it, play with the anchor points, add anchor points where I need them.